Why are concrete facades in need of repair? Many people in Finland live in apartment houses built of precast concrete panels, most of them built during the regional construction period in the 60s and the 70s. Back then, and even in the 80s still, the know-how related to the weather resistance of concrete structures was fairly inadequate. Therefore, the aging of buildings may cause damage in facades and balconies that now need to be repaired. In order to select the correct remedial measures, it's important to understand the reasons for the damage and what can be done to influence it. In order to understand the damage mechanisms, it's necessary to examine concrete a bit below the surface. Concrete is a compound consisting of cement, aggregate and water. The hardening reactions in the cement make the aggregate granules of the compound bond, at the same time generating large amounts of compound called calcium hydroxide, which makes the concrete very alkaline. In the picture you can see them as red crystals. High alkalinity is essential in steel reinforced concrete in order to protect the reinforcing steel from corrosion. In such healthy concrete no corrosion occurs in the reinforcing steel even with large amounts of moisture in the concrete. Carbon dioxide gas penetrating into the concrete pores slowly destroys the alkalinity protecting the steel reinforcement as it reacts with the moisture in the concrete and the calcium hydroxide generated by the cement. However, sometimes corroded reinforcing steel can be observed in the surfaces of aging concrete structures. The reason for this is the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which together with water forms carbonic acid. This phenomenon is called the carbonatization of concrete. It causes a conversion of the calcium hydroxide in the concrete into calcium carbonate progressively reducing the alkalinity of the concrete that protects the steel reinforcements. If the concrete is of poor quality, it contains plenty of pores, cracks and voids through which carbon dioxide and consequently also carbonatization can proceed faster than in a tight, good quality concrete. The nearer to the surface the steel reinforcement lies, the faster carbonatization reaches the steel reinforcement. In aging facade concrete, carbonatization normally proceeds by 10 to 15 mm in a couple of decades. However, the proceeding rate may considerably deviate from this. When carbonatization reaches the reinforcing steel, it starts to corrode. If there is sufficiently moisture in the concrete, this is often the case in the Finnish climate and therefore corrosion will take place. Corrosion increases the diameter of the reinforcing steel bars, making them swell inside the concrete. When the corrosion continues for a sufficiently long period, the concrete cannot take the pressure caused by the corrosion swelling. Cracking and spalling are the first visible signs of carbonatization in the concrete and corrosion of the steel reinforcement. In most cases corrosion has then continued inside the concrete for several years already. Another significant phenomenon with damaging impact on concrete structures and requiring remedial actions is frost weathering. Especially concrete of poor quality is very porous, as already stated. When rainwater is absorbed by the concrete, water fairly quickly emanates along the capillary pores deeper into the surface. If the moisture content is high, the concrete capillary pores will be saturated with water. On the other hand, bigger air pores, so-called protective pores, remain partly air-filled, also in wet concrete, as their capillary suction power is small. Concrete that is made frost resistant during the manufacturing process contains sufficiently protective pores and therefore water expanding when freezing cannot penetrate and damage the concrete. This manufacturing process generating additional porosity was not introduced in Finland until the 1980s. Concrete facades built before this only rarely have sufficiently protective pores. When winter comes, wet concrete freezes. Water accumulated in the concrete pores increases in volume by about a tenth. The expansion caused by freezing water creates a pressure in the interconnected concrete pores and the pressure cannot be discharged. The pressure caused by freezing water is so high that it exceeds the cohesive forces in the concrete and leads to a frost weathering process in the concrete. Frost weathering causes mechanical damage in the concrete, which means that cracks appear in the concrete. 
When wet concrete freezes and thaws repeatedly, the number of cracks increases and finally they merge into bigger cracks. If continuing, the frost feathering makes the concrete structure crumble at an accelerating speed. Through a network of interconnected cracks, water can penetrate into the concrete at an increasing speed, which accelerates the frost damage process. In concrete facades and balconies, frost damage often starts in the interior parts of the structure. The concrete surface normally remains intact for a longer period, as it often dries before the concrete freezes. The damage does not start to show in the concrete surface until later, when the interior parts may have already lost most of their strength. How to manage these phenomena? The quality of the concrete is determined in the construction phase. Once the building is completed, there is no way to influence how fast carbonatization proceeds, how deep the reinforcement steel is laid, or to create frost resistance by means of protective pores. On the other hand, the corrosion of reinforcement steel and the frost damage in the concrete can be slowed down by keeping the concrete structures as dry as possible. Concrete surfaces can for instance be efficiently protected by applying a water repellent coating. However, the coating should be sufficiently breathing in order to allow the moisture behind the coating to dry. Improving the functionality of details, for instance by renewing eaves and window flashings for better functionality or by protecting the upper surfaces of structures from rainwater using protective flashings can also reduce the moisture levels in the concrete. When protecting structures, it's important to remember that preventive measures have to be taken in good time. When damage has already appeared, protection is not enough. Tougher remedial actions have to be taken. Before starting such actions, a condition survey of the concrete facade is required and based on the results, a detailed repair plan needs to be drawn up. Repair methods for precast concrete sandwich panel facades. Based on the previous video, it's possible to repair damaged concrete sandwich panel facades by additional insulation. This requires that a more protected and dry environment is built for the old structure in order to slow down or even completely stop carbonatization and or frost damage. If the external envelope already is in too poor condition to take the weight of additional insulation and a new facade, it has to be stripped off together with any old insulation before building a new facade. The new structure could be either a non-ventilated insulation rendered facade or a ventilated slab or brick facade. Non-ventilated insulated render facade structure. If a condition survey shows that the alignment, strength and adherability of the old structure are sufficient, and if a seamless traditional insulation rendering is selected as the new facade solution, it can be implemented in two different ways. In case of a thick insulation render, select thermal insulation PAROC FAS1 fixed into the old facade surface by means of mechanical fasteners. A hot rolled steel mesh is fixed to the same mechanical fasteners and three different layers of render mortar are sprayed onto the mesh in accordance with instructions from the system holder. If the building is designed to meet passive house requirements or if the thermal insulation layer otherwise is thick, it's recommended that the thermal insulation is executed in two different layers with overlapping slab seams. If a thin insulation render structure is specified for the building, use thermal insulation Paroc Fast 4 in case a slab product is required or, in case a lamella product is required, use Paroc Fal 1, which can be fixed to the substructure by adhesive mortar only. The lamella product can always be mounted in one layer, however thick the insulation layer is. Depending on the instructions from the system holder, in most cases no mechanical fasteners are needed. 
A thin render mortar is sprayed onto the surface of the alkali-resistant thermal insulation into which an alkali-resistant glass fiber mesh is embedded and on top of this a smoothing mortar and a surface mortar layer in accordance with instructions from the system holder. Non-ventilated insulated render facade structure. If the external envelope and the thermal insulation of the old facade are ordered to be stripped off, the insulated render facade can be implemented by fixing the structure to the old internal envelope. If a thick insulation rendering method is selected, level out any unevenness in the old concrete internal envelope using a filling mortar and or the soft mat-like thermal insulation Paroc UNM37, which makes the structure tight when compressed. Paroc FAS1 is mechanically fixed to its substructure. The same goes for the steel mesh and render mortars. If a thick render structure is selected and the internal envelope is made clean enough, for instance by sandblasting, any unevenness is to be leveled out using filling mortar. In this case, select thermal insulation Paroc FAL1 and fix it to the structure using adhesive mortar. This product can be used to execute the whole required thermal insulation work in one layer, even if the insulation thickness is designed to meet passive house requirements. Rendering and mesh work are to be implemented in accordance with instructions from the system holder, as shown earlier. Ventilated slab or brick facade structure. If deciding to mount brick cladding on top of the old facade, first install the flexible but solid Paroc Extra as a proper thermal insulation layer. On top of the Paroc Extra slabs and using the same mechanical connectors, mount Paroc Cortex as a wind protection thermal insulation with the wind protection surface outwards. Seal the seams by tape and press the underlying flexible insulation tightly against the old internal envelope. Paroc Cortex is a non-combustible product, even the coating, and therefore suitable in buildings of fire class B1 and B2. Leave a ventilation gap in the structure in accordance with the design and build a brick masonry facade on the new base. If the selected facade material is a ventilated slab structure with a separate support frame, first install the more flexible Paroc Extra between frame studs tightly against the substructure. Mount Paroc Cortex on top of the frame studs, which gives the whole structure a continuous thermal insulation and wind protection layer. The ventilation gap covered by a slab layer is mounted on a separate frame structure, which is supported by the load-bearing frame in accordance with instructions from the structural designer. Ventilated slab or brick facade structure, old facade stripped off. If the old facade is to be stripped off and brick cladding is selected as the new facade material, any large unevenness in the internal envelope has to be leveled out using filling mortar to be able to install the proper thermal insulation Paroc Extra tightly against the substructure. If this is not possible, consider using the more flexible mat-like Paroc UNM37 as the bottommost thermal insulation layer. The reason for this is that any airflow between the thermal insulation and the internal envelope will weaken the thermal insulation capacity of the structure. A flexible insulation pressed tightly against the substructure will prevent such airflows. If the thermal insulation has to meet high, for instance passive house requirements, it's recommended to use Paroc Extra in two layers with overlapping seams. The outermost thermal insulation wind protection product should be Paroc Cortex as shown earlier. If the selected facade construction is a slab structure and if it's executed using more than one layer of frame studs, it's recommended that the frame studs are installed crosswise or separated from each other by a continuous thermal insulation layer in order to minimize any cold leakage. Install Paroc Extra as thermal insulation between the frame studs and Paroc Cortex as a continuous layer on top of the frame, as earlier shown.